When you think of Detroit area rockers, the first thoughts are usually of Bob Seger, Mark Farner, Alice Cooper, Ted Nugent, and even Susie Quattro. And every once in a blue moon, someone will say, Hey, what about Derek St. Holmes? Most will reply, Derek St. Who? So let's try and fix that for those of you who clicked in this video not knowing who Derek St. Holmes is. First off, Derek St. Holmes is probably one of the most unrecognized guitarists and singers in rock and roll. His vocals and some guitar work can be heard on quite a few of Ted Nugent's greatest albums and some of his own albums too. He has worked a lot with Ted Nugent, though he has performed and recorded a lot on his own. But he has worked with Ted Nugent off and on since 1974. More times than even he can count. And even though Ted has shot him twice. More about that later. So now let's kick back and take a quick look back at someone who I consider to be one of the better vocalists and guitarists around, Derek St. Holmes. <laughs> Derek Bruce St. Holmes was born February 24, 1953, and raised in Riverview, Michigan, a suburb just a few miles south of Detroit. He got his first guitar for his 11th birthday. His first neighborhood band was called the Organized Confusion. Then in 1972, Derek started a three-piece band called Scott. He was the lead guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter. The band opened for an Amboy Dukes show at the Lincoln Park Theater. The Amboy Dukes and their guitar player, Ted Nugent, had already recorded several albums and were a staple of the Midwest rock scene at the time. When the Amboy Dukes broke up, Ted's road manager contacted St. Holmes about auditioning as a lead singer for Nugent's new solo project. When asked about first meeting Nugent, Here's what Derek had to say in an interview with Eddie Trunk. That was 1972, maybe. And we were just a young three-piece rock and roll band out of Detroit. The band was called Scott. We used to just play our own music. And I didn't play other people's stuff. I just wrote my own songs. But Ted's ex-tour manager said, you guys should open up for some of Ted's shows. There's not going to be any money in it but I think it would be good exposure. So we did it. I opened up maybe three or four shows, and before you know it, Ted was showing up at our shows. I was singer, guitar player. It was basically a cream kind of thing, a Jimi Hendrix kind of thing. Not as good as Jimi Hendrix, but you know what I mean. So he would see me play, and every time I looked over, he's on the side of the stage checking me out. And it took a long time. He wasn't crazy about getting another guitar player, I think, so it took a while. It took him until 1974. Ted said, hey, want to come out and rehearse a little bit? Want to see how it goes? I said, yeah, I'll drive up. So I drive up and I play with him for 20 minutes in the basement of this farmhouse on 100 acres, right in the middle of nowhere. After 20 minutes, he stops playing and everybody stops and he looks at me and he goes, how many marshals do you want? And I thought to myself, does that mean I'm hired? So I just said, I'll take two. And that was it. Then he said, we're going to go out on tour next week. Just do a couple of shows. You want to go? I said, yeah, I'll go. So I went and we didn't come home for like three or four weeks. He lied to me. We went out and we rocked it. We never stopped playing. We probably used to do 330 shows a year. Derek recorded on many of Nugent's albums. The first being the Ted Nugent album in 1975, where Derek had the vocal tracks on Stranglehold, Queen of the Forest, Just What the Doctor Ordered, Snakeskin Cowboys, and Hey Baby, which was one he wrote. 
He also recorded some on Free For All in 76, but he didn't see eye to eye with how things were going and quit. So they called in another singer to help finish the album, Marvin Aday, better known as Meatloaf. Then Derek came back and did Cat Scratch Fever in 77, and his final album of this run with Ted being the 1978 Double Live Gonzo. In 1979, Derek joined up with Ted Nugent's bass player Rob Grange and ex-Montrose drummer Denny Carmasi to form St. Paradise. They released one self-titled album for Warner Brothers in 1979. Next was in 1981, Derek teamed up with Aerosmith's guitarist Brad Whitford for the short-lived Whitford St. Holmes Band. As with St. Paradise, Whitford St. Holmes released only one self-titled album before splitting. Then in 1982, Derek was back in the studio with Ted on the 1982 album titled Nugent. Derek sang lead vocals on six of the ten tracks. Also on this album is Carmen of Peace, drummer of Vanilla Fudge. A couple of my favorite songs off that album were No 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 and Can't Stop Me Now. Both have Derek on lead vocals. I always thought this was one of Nugent's better albums. In 1995, Derek reunited with Ted Nugent for the latter's Spirit of the Wild album, on which Derek co-wrote seven songs and sang lead on six. I guess this is as good a time of any as to try and understand the Ted Nugent and Derek St. Holmes relationship. It actually is a good one, I would think, except maybe for the part where Ted shot him a couple different times. Now, one I know was a ricochet. The other time... Well, here's what Derek had to say about it and his relationship with Ted. When asked how many times he's been in and out of Ted's band, Derek answered, Oh gosh, 50? It's kind of like La Casa Nostra, he laughs. It's like Godfather 3. Once I think I'm out, they pull me back in. I think I'm out and all of a sudden I get a call. But yeah, I'm probably the longest standing still alive. He had shot me twice, and that's a whole nother story. He shot me in the leg. We were out shotgun hunting in the winter, and he just shot me in the leg. And then we're in the 80s. He's shooting at targets, and it ricochets back and hits me in the arm. And I was like, holy shit, this guy's dangerous. But yeah, it's pretty wild. I survived two shootings. It's good, he laughs. If you have ever seen Derek and Ted on stage together, they do have some good chemistry. I saw them a couple times back in 77 and 78, and it was really a good show. I heard Derek might do some tours with Ted in 2022, and I saw where Ted will be close to me come late summer. If Derek is with him, I just might have to spend a 50 to get in there and see them together again. One thing about it is when Derek is with Ted, the songs sound like they used to. They sound like the way they did when they recorded them. Now Derek is no slouch and can get it done on stage all by himself if needed. I just enjoy that old Nugent sound. Well, hope you enjoyed this short piece on Derek. The guy is really a great singer and guitarist. Get out and see him if you get a chance. And as always, if you see fit, give me a like and subscribe and share the video so others can watch it. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>